Hey guys, my name is Mark from JazzGuitarLessons.net. Welcome to this vlog on how to jazz up your blues and three main things that you can start doing. Uh, for any questions regarding the new instrument, which a lot of you will ask, uh, you can just see the description. That's a Strandberg uh, Jazz Salon, which I just, I'm getting still accustomed to. So let's get going with the, the lesson and the, the lecture. So the first things, the first three things I want to discuss is of course looking at the phrasing. Uh, for your jazz blues because people think you got to learn a whole bunch of scales. That's not even true uh, Then you can look into the second tip, which is how to vary the materials So before getting crazy with altered scales and diminished stuff, you can still use uh, Variety in a no-nonsense way starting with two scales which will alternate which you already know by the way And then the third tip will be to look into two five one legs So let's get going with the first step the very very first thing I tell my students when we start working together uh, on making your blues sound more like a jazz blues is simply to phrase more in eight notes. There's something very common in the blues and rock world of, you know, more on the rockish side rather than the jazz side is to go and learn licks like, you know, I'm oh, sorry, I'm really doing a bad impression of this, but everything that relates to, you know, SRV, Hendrix, BB King, all of this, which is tremendous material. When, however, you are trying to, to accomplish more of a jazzy sound, one of the best things you can start doing is, even if you're still using the blues scale, you can start phrasing with more eight notes. Simply. So instead of... Whatever, you go... Just by doing notes that are... Uh, sewn together almost more like a voice or a trumpet player or a sax player by the only this token Your solos will immediately start to sound jazzy so you can pause the video right now and try this and see if you can construct phrases that have a clear start and a clear ending and that are built mostly of eight notes So let me just do a quick demo of that to show you how it works simply by using uh, it's a blues in the key of b flat you know because we're jazz guys we're gonna do it in b flat so half step up your basic pentatonic box that we all started with the fifth fret one just go up a fret that's a scale so i'm gonna do a quick demo video with that scale and then i will see you right after for more tips three four Great job. All right, guys, so the second tip, after you're able to phrase more in eight notes with the current vocabulary, it can be just a blue scale, it can be any other modes or scale you've already worked on, what I want you to start looking at is adding variety. And often in the jazz world, guys are like, well, this is Dorian, and then this is Mixolydian, I have to do all these things, like, and people freeze. So the best place to get started is by adding variety by alternating two blue scales. Two blue scales, Mark? What's that? Yes. So there is a minor blue scale, which we've just used, which is basically that good old box with the, the B flat. So a six fret box, if you will. Now that's the one that would be the regular gear to go to for rock solos, you know, say the language of SRV and all of this, it's right there. There's also another blue scale. So we would call this one the minor one and then go three frets down and start with AKA G minor pentatonic, right? And that scale is actually B flat major pentatonic. One of the recipes you can apply right away is play first four bars of your B flat blues, uh, 12 bar blues with that major scale. Right, 
just that third position box. And then for the last eight bars, since that's a 12 bar blues, you can just go to the minor scale. That's it. Keep phrasing in eight notes, do that scale, and then do the next scale. And the result of that will be that your phrasing will sound more like you're almost like making the changes on the blues on the jazz side, just because of the eight note phrasing and because this one sounds more major, this one sounds more minor, and it's more conducive to making it sound like jazz. I prefer Charlie Parker, Miles Davis, and even more modern players, that's sort of a recipe. So let's just demo this uh, with a higher tempo, maybe like a 132, B-flat blues, two choruses, four bars here, eight bars here, and here we go. A three, four, major. <laughs> Back to my major. Good job, guys. So if you are doing this on the blues now, you have phrasing more in eight notes. That sounds more, kind of more bebop-ish. And then you have this variety that you can use the scale, the major one for the start and the minor one for the, the, the end. And you noticed, I have these blues scales, but of course I'm gonna add notes in between. I'm gonna be chromatically, right? This is all fair game because it's jazz anyways. So, so long as you resolve your lines, it's gonna sound good. So what's the next step? Well, the third element that I recommend my students do right away is, uh, and by the way, that, that's uh, the kind of stuff I work on one-on-one -on -one in my program, my new program, the Jazz Guitar Accelerator. Uh, if you're interested in finding out more about this, you can book a call with me uh, with the link in the description below where we do this and much, much more. Uh, so what I, I was about to say, the third tip really is to start working on the two five licks. So people will have these collections of licks and modes and arpeggios that can play and then maybe know where to apply them. So if you have these dozens of licks, this is for you. So we are in the key of B flat. So you have a B flat, so the two is C minor seven and then to F seven, so that's a two and the five chord going to a B flat. So why not use bars? Uh, yeah, you have to think in terms of bars as well. So the first four bars, major. The first, the next four bars, minor, blues, and then play a two five lick. That's it. So why not use this opportunity while you're on blues to plug in your two five licks? I'll show you my favorite two five one lick to use uh, in this this context, and then I'll do a quick demo of these steps uh, on the on the blues. Okay, so here's my favorite two five licks. So the chord is C minor seven. You will start with this note and climb back down an arpeggio of C minor, and then land on this note. So it's five flat three one seven. And then you will land on this A note, which is the third of F, your, your five chords. So. Okay, and then here you're going to climb back up the same notes. So, and then you land on, on this note, which is, which is the fifth of your, your B flat chord. So let me do this in time. A one, two, a three, a four. And then you're done. So if you have this format for playing major blues lines, minor blues lines, and then a two-five lick, you have your plan for soloing on the blues. So let's demonstrate demonstrate this right now. Three, four. Minor. Lick. And here's a lick again. All 
All right, great work, guys. So there's always some place to go, even if you're improvising on a blues, which is pretty forgiving because you can play pretty much any note so long as it's tasteful. So here's some more stuff. If you say, Mark, I'm already phrasing in eight notes. Great. So you're an advanced player. See if you can phrase with triplets or even 16th notes, like double time lines. And then the second step, like variety. Oh, Mark, I can do the major and the minor one. Great. See if you can add chromaticism in between the two or start to use these Mixolydian sharp four or these Dorian modes or whatever Phrygian that you're using. See if you can apply them one by one. And the third tip, which is two, five, one lick, plug and play more licks, but also you can always look at different bars to plug in two fives. So if you look at, if you're an advanced player, you look at bar four, say, well, we're in B flat and then bar five, we're going to an E flat, so the four. Well, in the bar right before that, so bar four, you could put a two five going to the E flat and then plug and play your licks, which I won't demonstrate right now, but this is always some place that you can go. Uh, speaking of which, this is the kind of work I do with my Jazz Guitar Accelerator students. So if you're interested in finding out more about this, get on a quick call with me, it's totally free. I can check your playing, listen to you, we can talk about your goals and I can craft a plan for you to, you know, become the best jazz guitarist you could possibly ever be. So uh, please do that. It's in the description with a link or here or here. And that's it for this lesson. I will see you guys soon on the website. Plenty of blogs, standards, lessons about chords and scales, etc. It's jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. And of course, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. And I will see you very soon. Take care. Thank you.